It's Jesus who always comes to us. And this is really affirmed in the first reading from the Book of Wisdom. A marvellous reading about God affirming us. And He's always there encouraging us. So as we gather on this evening, we ask the Lord to come into our lives. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. My Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We pray continually that our God may be worthy of his call and by his power fulfill all your desires for goodness and complete all that you have been doing through faith. Because in this way the name of our Lord Jesus Christ will be glorified in you and you in him by the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. To turn now, brothers, to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and how we shall all be gathered around him, please do not get too excited or alarmed by any prediction or rumour or any letter claiming to come from us, implying that the day of the Lord has already arrived. Word of the Lord. Provinces of the Roman Empire 
collaboration and corruption went hand in hand, as it normally does. Tax collectors, employed by the enemies of their country, collected money from their fellow countrymen. So people like Zacchaeus were despised as being beyond respect. And the tax collectors were also guilty of what we call white collar crime. They took a cut for themselves. They skimmed profit for themselves. Zacchaeus was therefore not a popular person within the community. Here was a real test for the local people. Did they have a grain of tolerance and forgiveness for people like Zacchaeus? Well, not likely. Jesus' arrival in Jericho is like a fly in the ointment. Jesus had an alternative approach. Rather than despising Zacchaeus, Jesus invites him, Jesus invites himself to this sinner's house for a meal. The first reading from the Book of Wisdom says that God is merciful to all. And that reading goes on to say about God, You love all that exists. You hold nothing of what you made in abhorrence. For you, for had you hated anything, you would not have formed it. It's a great reading from the Book of Wisdom, affirming God's relationship with us as people. That reading speaks of God's love, and God gives people the opportunity to repent, to change their lives, because all God can do is love. And so Jesus' action in this encounter with Zacchaeus reminds us of the potential for conversion. And those who attended John Printmore's parish mission were also reminded of the gift of conversion. Zacchaeus' act of conversion is shown in his willingness to pay back fourfold what he stole or skimmed off and promise to give half of what he owns to the poor. And in this, Zacchaeus goes beyond what the law of the Old Testament demanded of him. Well, if we want enough prison TV programs, we seem to be aware that there is a kicking order among sinners and among prisoners in prison. And for a variety of reasons, some crimes are regarded as lower on the pecking order. It is a device of, for covering up the truth, denying our sinfulness. Well, I think Zacchaeus was perhaps the top of the list of someone who was sinful. But he had power and control. Sometimes we may put ourselves in positions where we think we are above others, like good old Zacchaeus. And we can make rules for ourselves within our family, at work, in the parish, in our sport, or in our social groups. And we may take joy in our power, or subliminal power. We can be like Zacchaeus. But then, <coughs> Jesus walks into town. He walks into our life. We may have a sudden sickness, or we may experience a death in the family, or perhaps redundancy, an accident. Whatever it might be, we are brought back to reality. Our power means nothing. 
We have to re-evaluate what's important. And paradoxically, people who are given a real shock in life, they come to see that real power is in service, living the gospel. And this Zacchaeus story has two messages. First, it's a comfort to sinners. But it's also a challenge to the righteous. It's not easy to welcome sinners, the outcasts of society. But it is a principle of Christianity. Jesus saw that Zacchaeus' wrongdoing was not the whole of him. And that he had within him the possibility of goodness. Well, Jesus' vision of Zacchaeus affected the way Zacchaeus saw himself. Goodness evokes goodness. And so Zacchaeus was given the chance to change, and he did. And I don't think everyone in Jericho would have agreed with what Jesus did or rejoiced in what Jesus did. Because Zacchaeus may well have abused them. <coughs> Our response may be a little slower than Jesus, but we really don't have an option if we truly seek to be one with Jesus. We have to act like him. Well, we have evil in the world. We can see it in terrorism and extortion. These are realities. We have selfishness, perhaps a bit lower down in the pecking order from terrorism and extortion. But selfishness can also be dominant in the way that we relate to others. Is the possibility of conversion possible for people who act in a selfish or evil way? Well, Zacchaeus reminds us, it can happen. And this story about Zacchaeus really affirms this. Jesus is teaching us about the importance of our attitudes and our actions. We shouldn't refuse to act because of our prejudice or self-righteousness. Often we just put the focus on the Zacchaeus, how he changed. But I think equally important is the response of the people of, of Jericho. How did they respond? A resolution to divisions and the possibility of conversion are always real options. And this story, like the story of the Good Samaritan or many other encounters of Jesus, reminds us of the power of Jesus intervening and the power of his love and forgiveness. So we now proclaim our faith. I believe in God.
make you better known and loved. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask blessings on all those recently elected to public office. May they serve our communities honestly and with due diligence. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are to receive the sacrament of confirmation shortly, may the Holy Spirit fill their hearts with his love. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our May those who serve us in Parliament be given the gift to judge rightly the true value of all human life. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our We pray for the recently deceased of our community, Leo Hand, Joan Oakley, Don Simpson, Colin Callagher, Mary Maureen Quinn. May they know, now know the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. The loving Father, we turn to you these prayers that we offer them in the name of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
pray that this our offering may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Set up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again. Adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love. Revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks, the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Tell 
celebrating therefore the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all other bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, his spouse, with your blessed apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.